that ruling to see what happens in the trial of the capital bank owners, uh, in particular Mr. Uh, Atu Essien, who has agreed to access Section 35. The two others have not agreed so to do, and we'll show you that on the touch screen as well. And then later on, the full segment of the program, Countryman Songo, uh, your favorite sports personality, will be in the studio to talk to us about Black Stars. This evening, a, a glimmer of uh, hope came to Africa again when we have succeeded in getting into the quarterfinal um, again uh, since 2014, I believe. The we get the 2010, the Black Stars were in the quarterfinal. 2014, we're not in the quarterfinal. But now, we are back in the quarterfinal with Morocco uh, beating Spain by uh, a penalty shootout. And then in the later game, Cristiano Ronaldo, even though he was on the bench in Portugal, managed to overcome the threat from Switzerland. They beat them by five goals, six goals, I hear, to one. Uh, because I was uh, in press time here uh, before the game ended. So 6-1 is what we've been told. I'm sure that is correct information. Therefore, Morocco will be meeting Portugal in the quarterfinal. Um, the most mouth-watching quarterfinal, of course, on Saturday night when England will be playing the French. And then there's Argentina and Holland. And there's Brazil and Croatia. All games very interesting will be broadcast to you uh, here from Metro TV. And those of us who are wondering uh, when we come back on DSTV, we'll be back tomorrow on DSTV. Uh, we have had to change some the cabling and technical work to fit our World Cup broadcast. And uh, that's why we've been off DSTV for that long. We apologize for it. Tomorrow, we'll be back on DSTV. And so from tomorrow, you can see it's 28 minutes by the top of the uh, 9 o'clock. Good evening. Welcome, uh, Deputy Minister of Finance and uh, Member of Parliament for Etiwa. Is this south? East. Etiwa East. So oh, it's east and west. Okay. Uh, let me go on the touch screen before I come back to yes. you. Thank you. Uh, let me go on the touch screen and show our viewers um, the, uh, the conversation. So there's been quite a bit of conversation, hasn't there? Uh, and uh, this evening, majority of uh, NDC communicators are raising issues that these two men are speaking at cross purposes or they are loggerheads. But it turns out that they are not. And we're going to show you to you why they are not. So and, um, a request went out from the Ministry of Finance to the Attorney General, the Honorable Godfrey Dami, to issue a, an opinion whether or not uh, the ministry decides to embark upon uh, some adjustments in the bond market, whether that is uh, acceptable to the law. And he gave an opinion, and this evening people are saying uh, different things about that opinion. We're going to put the matters in proper perspective because before we go back to the Deputy Minister of Finance to speak. Uh, so Mr. Kerofriata first made the publication on Sunday and then on Monday, and then he's handed over to uh, his able lieutenants, including our guest tonight, to do the rest of the talking. Let's go and see what opinion uh, the Attorney General sent to the Ministry of Finance. Now, uh, a lot of NDC people uh, and many Ghanaians are applauding the Attorney General because they say that uh, he's protecting our money. He told the Minister of Finance that we can have our money. He's a very good man. Uh, so that's, that's what they are saying about Godfrey Dami tonight. However, let's look at what he wrote and then get the details. So we start from here. So before this page, now I've, I've, I've shortened it so that it's very quick and we can understand. So I've gone to the real germane facts. And so before this page, what was there was uh, the request from the Ministry of Finance to find out whether they can adjust the, the contract with bond market holders uh, to, to, in order that it makes sense, in order that it's legal, they went to Attorney General to ask him, can we do so? And this is what he said. So let's read on. He says, a bond agreement constitutes a contract between the parties to the agreement, carrying with it the intention that the law would provide a remedy if breached or recognize a duty if performed. Traditional contract doctrine forbids the unilateral modification of contracts and and treats a proposed unilateral modification as an offer that is not binding until it is accepted. I, I, get, I think I get, we, we get a sense. He's beginning his opinion from here. He says, traditional contract doctrine thus forbid a unilateral modification so that if there's a contract between two parties uh, in, in the context of a bond agreement, one party cannot unilaterally uh, make adjustments unless it is accepted by the other. So when adjustments are proposed, they'll be treated as an offer and it is binding when it's accepted. So let's move on and see the context within which he renders his advice. He goes on to say that in the absence of the agreement by the parties, it will be unlawful for the government to unilaterally introduce a CACS into the CACS, you can call it an adjustment, any amendment, what, however you call it. There's a technical name for it, which I'll show you, but just so that we understand, we can call it the adjustment. So it says, uh, it is unlawful for governments to unilaterally introduce CACs into the bond agreement and may constitute an event of default under clause 12 of the terms and conditions of the bond issues under the program. Okay, let's go on. Whether under Ghanaian law, executive action, that is, uh, i.e. executive instrument 
emergency powers can be employed to impose adjustments on the bondholders. So he's raising the question, which is what legal opinions usually do. He's raising the question that he's been asked and he's answering it. So in the last paragraph here, the question that is being asked of him is whether or not under Ghanaian law, executive action, uh, that's an executive instrument, emergency powers, can be employed to impose the adjustment. So they're asking him whether executive action or the use of emergency powers can be used to amend the, the agreement that government has with bondholders. So the situation is that government has an agreement. It sold its bonds to people. Uh, people have bought the bonds for different categories and uh, different tenor and all of that. Now government is saying that all of those must be renegotiated because government is looking for a window in 2023 where they don't have to pay interest to anyone. Uh, people can wait and take their interest later. If you want to take your interest right now, you cannot get the interest that you signed for. Is that legal? Is that illegal? That's the question that went to the attorney general. And the attorney general was being asked that, can we use executive uh, uh, powers or emergency powers? Because under the constitution, the president can apply emergency powers to do certain things. Is this one of them? That's the question that was asked of the attorney general. What did he say? He said, um, under Ghanaian law, the executive authority of the state vests in the president and is exercised in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution. The executive is empowered by law to issue executive instruments which have the effect of law once made. Article 21 of the Constitution allows for the restriction of general fundamental freedoms of persons in Ghana in the event of immense, in the event or uh, imminence of an emergency disasters or similar circumstances to ensure public safety and public health protection. Further, Attorney General says, Article 31 of the Constitution gives the President wide discretionary powers which are used during emergency situations. Even though the limitations provided by the Articles 21 and 31 confer executive powers on the President, it is not contemplated that such powers can be used merely to impose CACS's on bondholders in the absence of circumstances necessitating the use of such extraordinary powers. So let me explain there again. The uh, question to the Attorney General whether or not um, uh, the executive powers granted by the President and the emergency powers granted to the President under the Constitution can be applied. He says no, it cannot be. That those executive powers are for a specific event and such events are imminent disasters and all of those things. The, the executive what he's saying is that the application of the emergency powers by the president is already contemplated by the constitution. The constitution designs or predicts ways in which you can use the pandemic, that, 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 that. It's predictable. You cannot include this bond issue in that. So those powers cannot be applied to amend the bond agreement. Okay, he goes on. Executive actions, including executive instruments and emergency powers, may not be lawfully employed to impose restrictions on the bondholders since they will operate retrospectively and may also constitute an event of default under Clause 12 of the terms and conditions of the bond issues under the program and a breach of the terms of the bond agreement. So the Attorney General is saying that, okay, yeah, the executive powers, even if you want to use it, you will have to apply it retrospectively. And under the 1992 Constitution, you cannot apply laws retrospectively in Ghana. It's not possible. The Constitution debars that clearly. No law shall be applied retrospectively. So he's saying that because you did the bonds in 2018, 2019, 2020, whenever, if you want to use executive uh, uh, emergency powers of the president today, you would have to backdate and apply it retrospectively to when the bond was being done. It doesn't even make sense. You cannot use an emergency power today for something he signed in 2018. So he says that doesn't work. Okay, let's move on. Um, uh, is that all? Okay, I think, I think that's all. So that's where the Attorney General ends, that um, government cannot change the relationship they have with bondholders in a unilateral way. The bondholders must agree. The government is saying tonight that we are on the same page with the Attorney General. The Attorney General said that we cannot compulsorily do it. We cannot do it unilaterally. We have to do it with them. So we are going to ask them whether they want a haircut, as they call it, whether they want reduced. What is going to happen and what has happened? What is the conversation that is being had between government and the fund managers and the bondholders? Uh, we go now to Deputy Minister. She will tell us uh, what is happening. Is that a correct uh, representation of the opinion that you guys receive from the Attorney General? Uh, good evening to your listeners, and that's exactly so. Mm -hmm. um, the Attorney General gave us several opinions. Mm -hmm. And the last one, which we have followed through, is a voluntary um, way of going about things. Because certainly, 
One, we cannot do things in, in, in retrospective. Um, we cannot um, uh, also impose our will on um, people that already we have signed many agreements with in terms of um, the agreements on the bonds. And so we decided to go the voluntary way. Other countries have gone that way and they have been successful. The voluntary or yes. the compulsory? Jamaica, Jamaica went the voluntary way and they were successful. They had 99% of their people participating in that. And so we are hoping that it is, it is in the same vein that um, we are coming to our people and asking that we voluntarily assist government in its set operations. But let me put uh, all these things in perspective. Paul, if you would recall, um, right in 2020, government came to parliament, government told parliament that, yes, um, based on the COVID-19, which nobody anticipated, it had to reduce its um, revenue by about 13 billion, but yet it will have to incur some additional expenditure that it never envisaged. And so that alone was more than about 20 billion. When you look at our debt trajectory from 2017 to 2019, we were around 61% of debt to GDP ratio. Mm -hmm. And then when the COVID hit, with all that we had to do, our debt immediately shot up because we had not anticipated for this. It shot up, it went above the 70s. And in 2021, just as the world was um, recovering, there was another wave. And all these things we did um, around this time, we also, around that time, we also had to borrow more to make sure that um, the ultimate aim of the president was to save lives and livelihoods. And remember, the president even said that as for getting the economy back on track, should anything happen, we will be able to do that. But for now, the most important thing is for us to save lives and livelihoods. And in doing that, we incurred huge sums of debts. And that shots our debt to GDP ratio way above the 70s and in the 75. And so when you look at the 2023 budget, Government set out to one, um, make sure that in the midst of the global and domestic challenges, we would come up with a budget that will one, help us stabilize the economy and then also get the economy back on track. And as part of that, government had to come up with some revenue measures to help us raise more revenue. Because clearly, looking at the situation in which we find ourselves and what is happening globally, um, we are closed from the international capital market for um, now to maybe three years. And so we need to raise revenues on our own. And so when you look at the 2023 budget, one of the measures, the, the fiscal consolidation measures, is to raise more revenue. And secondly, in raising more revenue, we also need to cut down on our expenditure. And how do we do that? Our expenditure consists of compensation, interest payments, statutory funds, and other like, um, goods and services that the ministries, departments, and agencies use to run or offer government services and capital expenditure as well. So all these things are part of our, our expenditure. And we, we need to reduce our expenditure. And three, we also, based on our debt levels as a result of the COVID and what happened in Russia that took a toll on our economy, um, we needed to also address our debt sustainability issues. And as part of that, as part of that, we needed to enter into some debt operations. And in the midst of all this, we should also remember that we are in an IMF negotiation. And as part of the IMF negotiation, we also need to come up with um, debt levels that are sustainable, prove to them how we are going to sustain the debts that we have incurred. And so um, in this situation that we find ourselves in the midst of an IMF negotiation, where this is a must that we do so that we will move on to the next step, um, get onto a staff level agreement, and then get the support that we are hoping the IMF will give to us in the form of about 3 billion, um, 3 billion US dollars, one, to help our balance of payment issues, to help us um, shore up our forex, and also to boost the economy, and help us get back on track. So, um, okay, I it think is that's well said. Yeah, that's okay. So, yeah. for somebody listening to us today, yes. who is a nurse, yeah. and paid uh, 5000 to some fund as tier two pension, for instance. And uh, the person is hearing all of this news. So what agreement will that person have potentially entered into if he paid to, to tier two pension, for instance? Um, it, it, it is not 
that easy. Mm -hmm. Let's let me just put it in the context that um so government, like I said, decided to enter into a debt and debt voluntary debt exchange with um its um, bondholders. And in doing this, government says um those with treasury bills, there are quite a number of um, um financing instruments that the government holds on to. One is the T bills and the other one is um the bonds. For T bills, government says they are exempt from um this debt operations or debt exchange. What, what is the, how will the somebody treasury know bills. that? How somebody the know treasury, that bills really treasury bills are the instruments that you hold um, um, in the form of a 91-day, 182-day, or 364 days. How do, I, how do I get into that? How do I hold that? How would I know that I'm doing treasury bills? Uh, you, you, buy from, you buy from your bank. So I go to bank it, X. It usually... I tell them or yes. they suggest it to me. It is your... You choose the kind these. of investments you, you, want to, you want to make or indulge in. And for the treasury bills, that is what is stated as the 91 days, the 182 days, and the 364 okay, days. Okay, so treasury bill means I'm buying treasury bill with my 1,000 CDs. Yeah. So in 90 days, what do I get? In 90 days, you get the coupon rates plus um, uh, the, the value of um, so the principal that you So say in 90 days, in. I'm getting 1,200. Assuming it's, okay, yeah. Okay, so if I went yes. into treasury bill, you are yes. saying to me that At the uh, end with of all the announcements being the made, maturity, that's not affected. The 91 days, you get exactly... What, um, the so, so treasury bill is not affected. It's not. It's exempted from this. Um, okay, so which ones are affected? And again, uh, individual bondholders. Individual bondholders are those who also purchase directly um, with the uh, financial institutions, where they ask um, them to purchase a, a, a two-year bond, a three-year bond, five-year bond on their behalf. And when you do that, um, you are given um, a certain number, and so you know that this is an individual purchase that you have so made. So they also are exempted. They are also exempted from the... So individual bond... The but that individual bond holders means that they must have contributed a lot of money. They must have bought their bond with a significant amount of money. Is, it, is that what qualifies you, them you, to you, be individual? You, no, um, you, you, can, you can buy any, any amount. 500 as individual? You can do that? The bonds are usually um, um, high, 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 yes, high higher, placed. Yes, so that the so minimum for individual may be 100,000 CDs. Oh, I, I, it can even be 100, 200, 300, but usually, Whatever yes. It is. Okay. Bond so holders, individual bond holders participants, are exempt from, yes. Treasury bill participants and individual bond holders are exempted. Yes. yes. Okay, so who are in? So those who are in are those who went through um, the financial institutions. Like, mm -hmm. then you, um, the, the issue of... The NERS comes the, up. The NERS comes, comes up that um, uh, they go through a trustee, they go through fund managers, and so they buy it on their behalf in a group or as an association or, yes. So, so like um, Ghana Nurses, Registered Nurses Association, yes, takes yes. their dues and buys government bonds. Yes, mm -hmm. and so that is not an individual per se. But even with that, government is saying that... that that's an individual, that's a group. Yes. Yeah. And I'm saying that even with that, mm -hmm. government is saying that um, if we can voluntarily accept... Uh, to come on to this debt um, exchange that we are proposing. Um, Paul, it is currently where we are, we are in a crisis. And it is the best, even though it is unpleasant, it is what is necessary for us to move to the next step now. It is unpleasant, we all know it, but it is the necessary action that we ought to take to get the economy to stabilize. And as we do this, if we are able to do this, straight away, we cut down on our huge interest payments. When you look in the 2023 budget, interest payment alone is 52.5 billion, 52 .5 billion Ghana cities. Amortization is 22.3 billion Ghana cities. And you look at the total amount of tax revenue that we want to raise for 2023 alone is 114 billion. So if these two items of debts alone is taking more than 70% of your tax revenue. And it tells you, you are in a situation where you need to fix it. If you don't fix it, the country will not stabilize. And the consequences okay. will be there. So, so I still need to get the, the I, I get your point. So the um, treasury bill holders are exempted. Individual bond holders are exempted. The other group of people who are not exempted is those who invested and bought the bonds in groups. Yes, but um, Paul, whatever amount of money that you invested in, be the principal or the principal, yes, irrespective of whether it's uh, for individuals or it's institution based, nothing happens to the principal. So if I want you, my principal now, I can get it. You get you, but the that means I'm exiting. If I want my principal now, then it means I'm exiting, isn't no, it? No, but you know these bonds are traded on the markets, mm -hmm. so it's uh, a, a matter of um what persists in the economy now mm -hmm. and what persists in the economy now with inflation at 40 percent 
um, you, you don't expect to get the same value. That is why we are saying that let us work with the debt restructuring program and allow the economy, the markets to fix itself. As the market fixes itself, I mean, you are in a better position as we have provided. We are changing the current or the existing bonds with four different bonds and with different tenors and, uh, and different. Uh, so we rates. are signing up to new bonds. We are proposing. You are proposing that, for us yes, to sign up to new We are proposing that you sign up to four different bonds. So the point is, are and people rates. going to lose their money or not? That's really the crux. Nothing of will be lost at the end of the day. Are if people going to get the proverbial haircut or not? Yes, we you remember we mentioned that in 2023, 2023, as part of the debt restructuring uh, measure, government will not be in a position to pay interest on yes. the bonds. Yeah. And so in 2023, you see a zero interest payment. So if I want interest, I should reschedule it in 2024? Or you're asking me to reschedule it to when? That is the nature of um, the new terms that government is bringing. In 2023, it's a 0% um, percent coupon payment. In 2024, you have 5% coupon payment. In 2025, 10% coupon payment until um, the end of uh, uh, the maturity period of, of the bond. That so is what, so what is the average is maturity period? Is it, was it going to be 30%? What, what was it? No. Um, there are four, four new ones. And the first one is... Um, on 2027, it starts from 2027. The next one starts from 2029. The third no, one. What starts from 2027? When you say it starts I'm talking. From? Remember, I said we have four different bonds. Yes. We have categorized the so, existing bonds. So the bond bonds. that I bought in 2020. Yes. Yes. Of which I thought I would receive my interest in 23. I now have to wait till 25 or 27 to receive it. If the bond matures uh, in 2020, uh, as you in 2024, government is saying that as part of the debt exchange, I am moving bonds um, to these terms that I have stated. Okay, so any bond whose maturity was 2023 will now have to be renegotiated. That is what we are saying. That is what government is saying. So government is looking for a window in 2023 where it doesn't have to pay any interest. Government and then is it looking for a window where... And then pay the interest subsequently. Yes, where in 2023, there's no interest payment and 2024, 5%, 2025, 10%, and beyond. And with this same um, principle okay, so that if you I have, want, yes. if I want my money, 500, the principal, can I collect it today and wait for 2024 to get a 5%? Or once I take it, I'm out of the business? No, once you take it, I mean, you've exited from um, the bonds market. Mm -hmm. But government is saying that, um, um, encouraging all of us. But if I want to take it, yes. what will I get? Um, it depends on the transaction, or the terms you enter. Is there a potential with? that my principal could be affected? And like I said, these bonds are traded on the markets. So the conditions pertaining on the markets will determine the value that you have now. But if I because invested 5,000 CDs yes. in the bond, yes. and I want it in 2023, you cannot guarantee that I will get 5,000 plus zero or 5,000 plus one. No, like I said, that um, we, we are coming up with new terms altogether. So then your 2023 maturity dates will not exist anymore. Mm hmm if we come up and you accept voluntarily accept this new debt restructuring, the then 2023 maturity dates will not exist anymore. But the Minister of Finance said yes. there's another window for people or individuals who want it and is creating a fund uh, for them, something like that. What about that? We are creating a fund for the, institution, the financial institutions to help to support them so that should anything happen, that because we know they will also take a hit because some have banned their incomes and, and, and some profits on these uh, investments that they have made, mm -hmm. then they can support them to also support their clients. Mm -hmm. So yes, but it is our hope that um, most of us will sign on to the voluntary debt exchange so that at the end of the day, we will all help stabilize the economy. Once we stabilize the economy, interest rates will come down, we'll create more space, I mean, and to, to enable the economy get back on track and also be able to continue to develop this nation which is a must currently mm -hmm. where we find ourselves we are in a crisis and we need to support government to come out of it and that is mm -hmm. why government is asking and okay, so those who accept it get on to the voluntary th th those who accept yes. the the people who accept voluntarily through their fund managers 2023 they get nothing they'll start getting something for 2024 yes that, that uh, is but true. you don't know yet the new um 
you don't know yet the the new four you say you are doing four different bonds now yes you are replacing you don't know the all the terms for the new four yes for the four um for the one that will mature in 2027 we are hoping to pay 17 percent of the value of the bond so assuming you have a hundred ghana cities in bonds so if um tw come 2027 government will pay the coupon rates which is 10 percent and in addition to that government will pay you 17 percent of the value of the principal so if it's a hundred government will pay you 17 right. so, so those who want who don't want it how will they say that they don't want it? who should they tell those who don't want to be part of it they want their money and go away who should they tell their fund managers because it is voluntary mm -hmm. i mean and you bought it from a financial institution or from a, a tier two whatever it is you you need to deal with where uh, those you bought and they will tell you that if you're exiting this is what you get it is the market that will determine that and the market is based on what is happening currently in the in the, in the what people are asking us is that i wish sure that if you put five thousand in and you get five thousand plus zero that's easy for people to understand but if you put five thousand you're going to get four thousand that's complicated no you are going to get if you put five thousand in and you sign on to the voluntary debt exchange at the end of um, the period that's the 2037 you get your five thousand 2027 yes from plus 22 2037 assuming 2027 yes that's what i'm saying that assuming that you sign up you sign up yeah you have to wait and to 2027 yes. to get your money so and that is interest. what government is saying i am coming up with four different yeah, but assuming you decide that you don't want to because ministers seem to have given made a provision no for those who if, don't want if to. you if you don't want to i have i've mentioned here that um it is the terms of the market that will determine what you get. So you may that not one, get your principal. Have, we don't have control over that. You may not get your principal. That one I cannot sit here and say, but it is the market that will determine because these bonds are traded. It's not, they don't just um, pay for it and buy it from you and then leave it. They also trade, the banks trade with it and earn some income on it as well. But if you are bringing new bonds and I am under the old bond, which yes. I say I want to exit, how will they trade that? Because it doesn't exist on the market anymore. You have replaced it with a new one. So once we bring, assuming we are successful with the uh, debt exchange, all other old terms ceases to exist. Yes. So, so then how will they... So once it ceases to exist, mm -hmm. then you are, you are bound by the new terms that government has put in place. So that even so if you want your money now, you get it under the new terms? Yes, if you agree to sign on to it, you get, um, you, you sign. Um, but if you sign, you don't get it in 2023. That is what government is saying that looking at the situation in which we find ourselves, government is unable to pay for any coupon rate or interest in 2023. But in 2024, government will do 5%, 2025, 10%. Okay, so until even if you don't want it, you can, the earliest you can get your money back is 2024. You can no. sign up to the one that says 2024. No. No. If you don't want it, that means you did not take part in this. So and you're then, exiting. So you exit and then, the market then, it is up to the market But how will the market determine, determine when the conditions under which you came in are no longer existing? No. We are still trading. The market is still trading. Okay. We haven't signed on to the voluntary. So assuming... Okay, so you finish that business before you sign on to the voluntary. You will yes. know those who don't want yes. for them yes. to get out of it. Yes. And then those who want to remain and then yes. you sign up. Okay, okay, I get it now. Yes. All right, so, so step one is to fish out those who don't want. But you are encouraging no, it, it as is many not about fishing out those who don't want. We are encouraging all of us everybody to want. Because it is necessary, like I said, it is unpleasant, but it is necessary for us but to do this. But if he needs a principal to pay school fees, do something, what should he do? Assuming his principal is 15,000 cities. That's what I'm saying. That we are only encouraging, um, but um, we cannot um, coerce, we cannot force you. It is up to you. That is why it is voluntary. But we encourage. But as you're not many optimistic about the fund the finance minister announced, which people were celebrating. People really liked it. You don't seem optimistic about it. Not that I don't seem op optimistic about it. What I'm saying is that we are of the view that let us take up this voluntary exchange. If for any reason um, one cannot, we have some liquidity available for um for that and for we also like have that. but yes. you know, as a developing country and, yes. the, and the and the minister actually encouraged local bond buyers as a developing country there'll be many people who need it's a bread and butter kind of economy for many of us so people really need the money oh but i'm poor I, so it will be difficult must, for them to sign up um, to admit something. that people had bought 10 
and eight year bonds, five year bonds, six year bonds. So it is, it's, it's not. Um, oh, I see the agreement that they are, we are dealing with, some of it is eight years? No, some, some, we have. Um, so people bought some, bonds knowing that they'll get their money eight years from the no, time they some, are buying? Some, no, because it's an investment. It is, yes. It's a long term investment for some people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so um, some do two years, five years. I mean, so it's, it's, it's there. It, it, it is, it's nothing new. It's only that this time, government is saying that I'm not in a position to pay certain interest in certain periods as a result of where I find myself in now. I am in a crisis and I need to be able to do this, one, um, Paul, um, to help us move to the next stage of the IMF negotiations because we also need to get to a staff level agreement. And if we are able to conclude this, we get to a staff level agreement um, and we are able to conclude the IMF negotiations, we get to um, have some forex and some monies that we believe will help stabilize the to economy bring, bring now. The economy. Because okay. 2023, I mean, globally, um, it's, the consequences are there, and we need to stabilize this country. And we believe that with this support, it will help us stabilize the country. Mm, I see. That's interesting. Okay. So, uh, were you in Parliament today? Yes, I was. Uh, how is the budget? Uh, the people, minority, were not happy that the Speaker used the void votes to approve the Appropriation Act, and they are determined that when it comes to the lower approvements, the second, third tier approvements, they're going to surely ask for a head count. They didn't like that. No, this, this is the first stage. And usually, after the budget is read, and we debate on the policies in the budget, and, and, and based on that, we, we pass or we accept the policies, and then we can carry out with all the measures that are in the budget. So this is the first phase, which we have done. We haven't gotten into appropriation yet. We have passed um, the policies and programs in the 2023 budget and that will give us the opportunity to look at the estimates of all the ministries departments and agencies and also and with all each the of them single single single, single. all the 43 mmd M mdas and as well as look at the revenue measures that government has proposed in the budget including the amendments to e levy and all that everything all the revenue measures um, that is where we look at it. Without the stage, we cannot go into the estimates. We cannot look at the bills and other relevant um, amendments that we need to make. So uh, this is a very big stage for us. And we are grateful to Parliament for the support we have enjoyed. We believe that um, we will sail through this. If all the measures in the budget are approved, um, we can raise some revenue. And also, if the uh, voluntary debt exchange also goes as we envisage it to go, and then we, we, we can stabilize the economy and get this economy on a footing that mm. will help us uh, okay. move on. We'll leave you here. We'll, you, you gave us 20 minutes. I think we spent more than that. Did you watch the Black Stars, by the way? I did. Um, oh, you did? I, I did. Were you, were that was, um, I, I, I got to join a few minutes later because um, on Friday we were in some engagement with all the financial institutions. And, um, oh, okay. So I you, you came out late to see that we were two goals down. Yes. And then you couldn't do anything about it. Okay, that's Abnau Sasa, a member of parliament for TY. He's talking to us about the bond issue. Uh, you're still on Good Evening Ghana. Later tonight, we're speaking to Countryman Songo about football. But now we go to the touch screen again and talk about the court. Uh, what did Justice Tabor for say? What did he not say? And uh, as we wait for the 13th of December, when he says that he will read his judgment in the famous Atwesian versus Capital Bank. Atwesian and Capital Bank versus the Republic case. Uh, after the break, we will come back uh, on Good Evening Ghana. We're going to talk about... The NDC Congress as well set up for next Saturday here in Accra, where Johnson Asidunketia is challenging uh, for some people for the uh, leadership role in the National Democratic Congress. After the break, we'll be right back. The world has gathered for football's greatest showpiece and Betway is giving you the chance to win on the cup in Qatar. Score free entries to win a share of 3 million Ghana CDs across the tournament. Enter our daily draws to win a guaranteed 30,000 Ghana CDs every match day. From the group stages to the final, it's a full month of incredible action. Only at Betway.com.ch. Terms and conditions apply. Regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. There are days when you think, whoa, today I've earned it. So order a global. Days when plans run longer. Or days when you can't control everything. Oh yes. 
Glovo, you order, we deliver. A state-of-the-art facility built with your family needs in mind. A medical center positioned for all your fertility problems and other diseases. Medimosis Clinic and Prostate Center. Our goal is to help our patients achieve and maintain optimal health. We have fully functional OPD laboratories in all our branches. Do you have problems urinating? Medimosis is the ultimate solution. Our Prostacure X capsules and Prostacure Herbal T treat prostate problems. Our Fromosis capsules gives you maximum performance and for the ladies Femacure X capsules solves all your menstrual problems locate Medimosis clinic and prostate center at Adenta barrier near the traffic light Ashaman Ajay Kojo Kumasi Ahinima Kokobing and in Accra ministries after the Ghana highways yard call 0244 068 447 we accept national health insurance card and all other private insurance card Medimosis clinic and herbal center your ultimate solution for prostate problems. So that was uh, about the bond issue about money. Uh, you can see Country Mansongo is already here. He's being mic'd. Uh, please put him on. The, put put a put a picture on it. Uh, they are micing Country Mansongo. Let them let people see. Oh, we don't have a camera that can take it. Camera two could have. Okay, yeah. All right. So that's Country Mansongo. You can wave if you wave. We'll see you wave. Yeah, wave, wave. It's, it's nice. It's nice. No, not Oja. Just wave. Okay, all right. So we'll get back to Countryman Songo. He's, he's not happy that we're taking too much of his time. We're just five more minutes and we'll go to him. Let me come to text messages. Please, let's hear what people are saying about their money. He says, Good evening, Paul. Fantastic delivery by the Evergreen Deputy Finance Minister. We know that interest rate on bonds or any form of debt instrument is the opportunity cost of borrowing to the government. And at any given point in time, investors expect their inflows in order to help them turn things around. It's unfortunate that as and when they expect their returns, it won't be forthcoming. But after the first year, they are going to receive their first payment. This, I think, is the first sacrifice that everybody must make to save the nation. Good explanation. Also coming from Nanaya Asamoa, he says, Paul, if people invested their monies in bonds and the interest won't be paid, hasn't the money lost its value whether they pay the principal or not? Lastly, coming from Emmanuel Konemensa, he says, so people who have invested in mutual or unit trust funds through investment banks will be affected indirectly, which is not appropriate. If the coupon payment for 2023 is 0%, it means investors will lose at least not less than 8% or 10% since that is the inflation rate target. However, real inflation in 2023 may exceed the target like we have seen in 2022. Also note that a CD today is not a CD tomorrow. The future value 
theory clearly shows people will lose value on money, not less than inflation. Can the minister explain why she says there is no loss of money? The principal will be devalued. It is a fact. Over to you. Okay, so this message is from Michael Ananti, and he says, Hi, Paul. Please ask the Deputy Minister why they are not investing in agribusinesses, which is the surest way of creating more jobs, generating revenue, and reduce importations to save the rapid depreciation of the city against the major currencies. How prices of goods and foodstuffs are skyrocketing in crippling Ghanaians' domestication in the panic of saving Ghanaians from the current economic hardship okay and this message is also from um michael isifu he says paul ask why individual bold bondholders whose coupons were due on the 5th december 2022 have not paid their interest Take over. We, we don't have much time, so I'll come to Eunice and uh, uh, um, Mikael later on. It's seven minutes past the top of the hour seven. We have to be uh, finishing this and go to our big sports discussion. Uh, so this is about the court matter. The pictures just went off. It's going to come back quickly. So Justice Cheba Four had appeared in court last week to deliver a judgment between the Capital Bank uh, shareholders and, uh, and the Republic. In, uh, the, the persons on trial is uh, Reverend Atu Essien, Reverend Fitzgerald Odonko, and Mr. Teteneti. Mr. Fitzgerald Odonko is uh, first accused. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Twisian is the first accused, the second accused, and the third accused. Uh, so what had happened is that uh, the judge was informed when he was about to give his judgment. I'm sure he already know that Mr. Twisian had accessed Section 35 of the Courts Act. What does 35 say? 35 allows a person to uh, plead guilty and then pay some money. So let's go and look at Section 35 of the Courts Act. So the, the judge had some remarks to make about it, and that's the point of this uh, narrative. So they will put Section 35 of the Courts Act so we can understand it very, very quickly and uh, see what it means, and then we can uh, guide you forward towards it. So this is where it is. Uh, Section 35 of the Courts Act, um, Act 459-1993, is entitled Offer of Compensation or Restitution. It says, where a person is charged with an offense before the High Court or a regional tribunal, the commission of which has caused economic loss, harm or damage to the state or any state agency, the accused may inform the prosecutor whether the accused admits of the offense and is willing to offer compensation or make restitution and reparation for the loss, harm or damage caused. Two, where an accused person makes an offer of compensation or restitution and reparation, the prosecutor shall consider uh, it consider if the offer is acceptable uh, to the prosecution. So that's Section 35 of the Courts Act. So uh, let's go to the agreement that was uh, shared with, that was put between the prosecution and Mr. Atuesi, and then you see it. And you have to keep in mind that the two other uh, accused persons did not access Section 35. That is Fitzgerald Odonko and Mr. Tetenete. Uh, they believe that they want to hear the judgment of Che for because they think they've acquitted themselves well and they will be acquitted and discharged. That's their belief. We don't know what's going to happen. But the two of them did not sign up for Section 35. Only Mr. Essien did. And so, uh, these are the charges that were preferred against Mr. Essien. And I'm reading to you the agreement that Mr. Essien had with the prosecutors. This is the agreement. It says, uh, the, the charges are as follows. Conspiracy to steal, contrary to Section 23.1 and 101.241 of the Criminal Offenses Act 1960 Act 29. B, stealing, contrary to Section 1241 of the Criminal Offenses Act 1960 Act 29. And C, money laundering, contrary to Section 11 of the Anti-Money Laundering Act. Act 2008, Act 749. Uh, so these are the offenses under which uh, Mr. Essien has been charged. So in the document, uh, the first accused person is William Atu Essien, uh, and he says that the first accused person, William Atu Essien, shall change his plea from not guilty to guilty on all the charges filed against him by the Republic. So what it means is that, as far as Mr. Atuesian is concerned, the Attorney General as uh, people had been able to secure a conviction. So they have secured a conviction upon Mr. Atuesian in the agreement that has been uh, egged out between the prosecution and the, the, uh, the accused persons. That agreement egged out uh, says that Atuesian shall now plead guilty to the offenses and, the, and then he shall do as follows. Okay, that person one to section 5581 of the bank uh, of Ghana Specialized Deposit, uh, Deposit Taking Institution Act, uh, Act 930, William Essien is prohibited from being appointed or accepting an appointment as director or key management personnel of a bank. 
specialized deposit taking institutions or a financial holding company upon the acceptance of these terms that's quite harsh isn't it that's quite very very strong so in the terms that the prosecution have accepted or they act out with mr atuisi and this is what he has accepted not to do first he's pleaded guilty secondly he's accepting that he will not be a, a, a bank the director of any bank and he will not accept an appointment for any bank or any financial institution uh, this is a guy who was who owned the bank who is big in financial institutions so that's a very very heavy blow isn't it he's not going to be able to do that anymore all right let's move on uh, also that mr atuisian shall pay an amount of 90 million ghana cities as restitution and reparation within one year from the date of conviction in the following manner a to pay an initial deposit of 30 million ghana cities to the government of ghana and or before thursday first december our checks show that this 30 million uh, from atuisian has already uh, already actually been paid uh, by the accused person uh, but because the judgment was not right on that day we don't know what it will mean but that the first 30 million had already been paid the second is to pay the outstanding amount of 60 million cities in three installments within one year from the date of the conviction so that after one year from the date of conviction all uh, 60 million should have been paid it should be paid as follows one 20 million ghana cities and or on or before the Friday 28th April 2023 20 million Ghana cities on or before Thursday 31st August 2023 uh, uh, and then uh, is it am I have I counted 23 20 millions okay we paid in three installments 120 million and another 20 million by 31st August I believe the other one uh, goes to the December but we didn't count all all the uh, the, 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 it's not complete. Quickly, the document is not complete. We did it the third. But this is how Atuisian's uh, uh, thing is structured. This is the way in which it's structured. He has to pay, uh, he's already paid 30 million, then he has 60 million, he has to pay it in three separate installments, and all of that is to be done within 12 months. That's what is acceptable to the prosecution. But on the day of the event, and I'd like to have Justice Chaba for photograph uh, behind me and so that I can introduce him to the people. Uh, the Leonard Justice Chaba, for he's a judge of the Court of Appeal, uh, but he's sitting in this case as an additional High Court judge. And uh, Justice Chaba, for a very affable guy, he's been on this show before. He appeared on Good Evening Ghana one time uh, when he was a justice of the High Court, when we were in the old studios in Laboni. And, uh, and then we talked to him nicely. So this is Justice uh, Chaba, for who is uh, uh, he's a very nice man, isn't he? So he said, uh, when he spoke in the court, and that was not part of his judgment, he just spoke about it. He said that he's not so sure whether Section 35 does apply uh, to SCN, and even if it does. I think we have that document as well. We can go to that. Let's go to that document quickly and talk about it. Okay, so these are the things that the judge, the judge said on the day that he came and uh, he didn't give the, his ruling. He said that the terms of settlement by the Republic are as follows. Uh, Mr. Essien pleads guilty to the offenses charged, and, uh, and he will pay the money. Uh, as ASEAN accepts to pay, pay 90 million, and then as a demonstration of good faith, a, a payment of 30 million was made on that day. The outstanding 60 million will be paid in three installments uh, until the end of 2023. The prosecution has considered the offer and finds it acceptable to uh, Section 35 of the Court Act 1993. The court, however, had issues with the terms of settlement. The court observed as follows, and this is what Chibafo said. He said that Section 35 1 of the court has provided that the repayment should relate to an offense that has caused economic loss harm or damage to the state in this case says the judge the monies at the center of the trial whose judgment is ready today belong to capital bank the monies were not of shareholders and depositors but not the monies were of shareholders and depositors but not of the republic bank of ghana provides the liquidity supports but that doesn't make the republic the complainant he even made a passing comment in court uh, to have received the loan from a bank into an account doesn't mean that the amount still belongs to the bank but the loan applicant etc hence section 35 he says uh, may not apply he went on to say that even if section 35 applies uh, the monies that were paid uh, were not commensurate, he says, with the, with the dollar exchange rate as of 2015 and 2016 when the monies were received. The accused, therefore, is not just expected to make a refund of the money he took at 2015 and 2016, but at least its equivalent in value as of today, so that the payment of the, uh, uh, to the receivers of Capital Bank will not be worthless. Okay, so this is what Justice Chabaf was said. And uh, uh, we've been talking to a wide range of people, lawyers, about this issue. And the, the, the conversation is that perhaps Section 35 won't actually apply. Let's put Section 35 back on the 
on the um, on the screen. So Justice Chairperson's concern, his lordship's concern, was that these are not monies that were taken uh, from from. Uh, it's not monies that are owed the state. And Section 35 is really monies that are owed the state. But with the greatest of respect uh, to his lordship, it would appear that the money was liquidity support. He made that point. So it's government taxpayers' money that was given to Capital Bank in 620 million, something like that. Now the prosecution and the uh, and the uh, accused people have worked it out, and they've seen that of that 620, all the monies went back to the the, 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 the Bank of Ghana. In fact, they've noticed that Capital Bank had already started paying, which is true. They started paying the loan. And by the time that the bank went, went down, there was an outstanding amount of money left, a little over 35, or a little over the 90 million. They have checks indicating that Mr. Essien had paid back some of that money. What is outstanding is 90 million. And so that's how they came to that conclusion. So uh, respectfully, it would appear that 35 actually works. But there were parts of the, uh, of the statement of the record of proceedings where you will find, I think they'll put it on, we'll show it, where you will find that the judge was by and large very aware uh, of the processes, the, the record of proceedings, where the judge was very aware of the, of the processes that were, be, that were uh, undertaken by, by them. So uh, it would appear that he knows. So let's look at this, for instance, by court, ruling of court, and this is um, June 18, 2020. This is the proceedings of the court. It says, as the learned chief state attorney confirms the offer made by the first accused through his counsel to the Republic and further confirms that the DPP, that is a director of public prosecution, is giving the offer the most thoughtful consideration, I may have to adjourn to enable the first accusers requested by the prosecution to present the offer in a, in a formal communication to the Republic. On the next agenda date, the Republic shall report to the court if the offer made is acceptable or not, for which the court will deal with it in the manner prescribed under Section 35 of the Court Act, Act 459, accordingly adjourned to the 18th of June 2020. So as of 2020, and this is the record of proceedings that we obtained from the court, as of 2020, the conversation about, uh, about this offer, about this uh, Section 35, was very clear. And everybody in the court, this is the court speaking, this is by court, the judge speaking in terms of preparing an adjournment towards the 18th of June 2020, two years ago. He said the chief state attorney has presented the thing to the accused person, and there he mentioned section 35. He said if the offer is made acceptable or not, for which the court will deal with in its manner, in the manner prescribed under section 35. So quite clearly, uh, the, the, the honorable court was clearly aware that section 35 had been invoked for the purpose of uh, Atwesian's guilty plea. Atwesian's guilty plea had been predicated on Section 35. That was, that was very well within the knowledge of the court. It's completely available here. This is the proceedings of the court. So we don't, we're not so sure why the learned judge uh, sort of had a change of mind, if he did. But we're waiting for 13th uh, of, of December. Now, there's one more thing we can tell you, the last one, is that there was media report that the, the judge, and if you can put Justice Chaber for photograph back there, that the judge had said something about the people at the Attorney General's office being compromised, and we have reliable information. And the judge is very unhappy with those comments that were published by the media. We understand that uh, on the 13th of December, when the judge comes into court, he will speak about that. Because many media houses have been cross-checking that information. And what we are hearing from the, the judicial system is that Justice Chamber Force says that never at any time did he intend to say that the prosecution has been compromised. That the words he used were not for that purpose. He, it is told to us that he was surprised that those headlines came out. So we are anticipating something else. And all media houses who have sent questions uh, to, the, to the judiciary about that, we have been told to wait until 13 December when Justice Chamber Force is going to speak about that particular issue because he says that he didn't say that it was widely reported that there's been some compromise it's a very big word to use a very serious matter where a judge is alleging that there's been compromise between the prosecution and the accused but that's a very very serious matter so for us and for some media houses it was very very important we quickly rushed them and said did the judge really say that justice chamber for says uh, from what we are told that he didn't say that and that he will clarify on, on the 13th of December uh, when he gives the ruling. But what we know now is that the application and the use of Section 35 had always been part of it. Let me just introduce you to uh, the lawyers for the matter, Tadio Sori. And it's interesting what is happening in that court. You see, because Tadio Sori, who is uh, the, the counsel for the uh, first accused person at WCN, is a, is a mate of Justice Che Bafour, they were, they were mates at the, same, at the university at the same time, in the same classroom, in the same law class. Tadio Sori was one of the very bright guys in that group. Justin Amenuvo, you remember him from the Electoral Commission. He was lawyer for the Electoral Commission. Justin is also a uh, lawyer for the uh, Fitzgerald Odonko. Put the other photograph over there. Fitzgerald Odonko's lawyer is a, is a, is a, 
Justin Amenuvo, and Tadio Soris' uh, uh, client is Mr. Atuisian. So a bit of interesting information about the case, but that's what it is. Section 35 uh, was acknowledged by the judge in 2020 as being the basis on which the plea bargaining was being done, the basis on which Essien was going to plead guilty. He was quite aware of that. Uh, but the last agenda, he said that he wasn't so sure about it. We are waiting to see what happens. And he also said that the 90 million, the quantum, he doesn't agree with it. We expect that he may increase it a little bit. We expect that Justice Chamber 4 will come and say that they should pay a bit more. We, we are not sure what he will say. We don't know how much. But we expect that he should say they should pay more. And the, the prosecution will also have to come to tell the courts how they came to the conclusion. So all eyes on the 17th of uh, December uh, 2022 will be there at the court and uh, we'll deal with it. All right. So that's, uh, that's, that's the story for that one. If you can have the photographs of the NDC coming up. That's the story. That's the concluding story for this one. Uh, thanks for looking at it. Ghana Black Stars. Okay, um, it's 10.22. We don't have time for another story. We are going to talk about football now. Uh, we have enough time to do the NDC story because the Congress is next week. Next Thursday, we'll talk about it. Next Tuesday, we'll talk about it as they lock arms with each other. Uh, now, it's, it's time to go to Country Mansongo. And if you were watching him on Monday, as I was, he was very animated and uh, he sounded almost angry. And yesterday, he was on Peace FM. This evening, you have been on Joy. I saw a, a flyer that says, did you get to speak on the PM Express? No, I was... Um, I, I was not available, but... I would make time for that. There's this photograph of yours going yes. around where you are lying in the bed. Doing with, what? With a cloth covering, and yeah. you look in a pensive wound, and they say, yeah. they write country mansungo, thinking about how to sack Otoado, and then <laughs> all of that. That's well, Otoado, he's already sacked himself. Yeah. You but, understand? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that was the, um, Afcon uh, Egypt. That's yeah. when he sacked himself. Well, no, that, that photograph. That, that photograph. Oh, you were in Egypt, the oh, Afghan yeah, Egypt. The That's the old one. Yeah, the Akosia Pia one. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. I see. Okay. <laughs> and the one who we were able to get to. But you don't like going to World there. Cup. You like going to Afghan. Why? No. I mean, I, it's, it, it's like, um, let me put it this way. Um, I always know where I'm coming from. And when um, the spirit demands for certain places, the spirit? Yeah, of course, yeah, I mean. Which know, spirit is that? I mean, that's what I'm saying. I always know where I'm going, coming from. Me, mm -hmm. You understand? I don't just move just like that. You understand? Mm. Yeah? I mean, you have... No, yes. You have to meditate and understand where you are going and where you are coming from. You understand? So and many, it will determine where you're going and where you should go. go. I just don't move like that. You I understand? see. Did Kreku mention your name? GFA president, did he mention your name anywhere? Ah. Did he talk about you destroying well, Ghana football? Yes, yes, yes. Why did he say that? Well, they, they were having a bench power uh, uh, meeting. That is In the Ghana. Premier League. Of course. So this is, there's been back since? Uh, no, no, I mean, before, before the World Cup. Before the World Cup. And he yes. said you are destroying Ghana yeah, football. I am destroying Ghana football. That countryman Songo. Yes, but I mean, Kent and Songo, who is destroying Ghana football? Nobody will. will will bypass Kate and come to me. They will just straight up fire. What the reason did he give for you destroying that? Ah, well, I can't tell because he feels that maybe um, I'm negative. But why do you when think you, when he is destroying Ghana football? When, when you don't think the same way as he thinks. I mean, he thinks that maybe you don't like him. You are, you are criticizing him. But I mean, I mean... But you've been criticizing Kusin Yantichi. Mean, very professional. Yeah, you did. You Everybody, did not only Kusin Yantichi, since I started this job, you understand? Sports is my job. And football is what I, I, I love best. You, so, I mean, I always keep the leaders on their toes in a professional way. That is all. It's just keeping them on but their toes. But why you, you used to think Kusinia Techi was a problem of Ghana football. Now you think it's Kets. What has Kets uh, but done? But that is what he is it, it, showing. What has he done? What did he do? Oh, come on. I didn't see him play. I didn't <laughs> see him on the bench. What did he do? Really? Yes, I didn't see him play. Oh, he wasn't on. 11. I beg you. I beg you. Okay, so what, did, what has he done? I mean, first of all, how do you take it? How, how do you go to World Cup? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you go to World Cup with a coach who had nothing to lose. How do you go to World Cup? I mean, he, he, he was the key person to appoint this uh, trainer scout coach. Utuado. Okay, so the problem we have with so, Kets is that I mean, he appointed a, a coach. That yes, because he did it mm -hmm. when we went to Afcon. Mm -hmm. He sacked Siki Akono. He brought in um, uh, Milovan and he said to uh, us that Milovan is not Matra Makwe. Milovan is a fantastic coach 
and we saw what happened. We were last. We placed last at Af uh, the one we went to uh, Cameroon for the AFCON. We were the last. You understand? And when we, when we went to World Cup 2, the same thing has happened. We are last in our group. You got it. So, I mean, who, appoint, who, who, who appointed the coach? It was Kedro. Did we end up last? At the end of the day, I didn't check the table. Did we end up last? Yes, with three we points. last. With three we're, points? We're, yes, with three points. But you guys had how many? Ah, <laughs> you, you're asking me. Ah, you guys had three had points. Four points. Ah, how did they get four? I don't know. Ah, they drew one, one with Kuna, South Korea. Yes. So they go four. Okay. Listen, listen. listen. And South Korea got how many? La Five. South no. South Korea to four. They two also got four. Yes. Okay, okay. And they qualified on goal difference ahead of mm -hmm. Uruguay. Yeah. So Portugal six, Uruguay four, Paul. South Korea four, well, Ghana, Ghana three. Ghana were last. Yeah, I, I get it now. Yeah. We went to Afcon in Cameroon. We were last in a group. In a group of the Comoros, Comoros, Gabon, and uh, Morocco. How possible? Mm. We didn't learn any lesson. Mm. We have to go in for a trainer scout. Who who we are going to a world stage? We have to understand that that place, it's not easy. I mean, it's a world stage. It's not child's play. When you are playing qualify to the World Cup or qualify matches, I mean, I mean they, those are child's play. Mm -hmm. But when you qualify to the World Cup, it's not a child's play. And yeah. you need the best out there. Then we we'll go to the World Cup. Ghana, we are last again in a group with uh, Uruguay, South Korea, and Portugal. I mean, for what reason? Look, you, you look, look at something here. Senegal had six points. Mm -hmm. Morocco had seven points. Oh, Morocco had seven points? Yes. Did they top their group? Oh, yeah, I'm coming, yes. Oh, Morocco, the wonders they are doing, you don't know. I've you seen fancy. what they did today. Uh -huh. yeah. So they had seven points. <laughs> they had seven points and topped a group that had second and third uh, placed teams from the World Cup. Morocco. So they topped the group with who else in the group? Um, the Belgium and Croatia. Belgium is good. Croatia is also good. Yes. But Croatia is playing Brazil in the quarterfinal. You understand? Then also, Cameroon, Tunisia. Cameroon are beating Spain today. Yes. Look at something here. Cameroon and Tunisia both had four. We had three. Oh, points. Cameroon and Tunisia also did better than us. Yes. Oh, that's not, that's not nice. So, in the last group games, when all African teams needed a win to stand qualification, hmm, they all won. But Ghana, what happened? Oh, the African teams all won their last group games. Yes. So but Ghana was the worst performing African. You, you, you we, we needed just draw. Just one point. And you needed a tactical coach. A, 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 a master tactician with system, proper system. He knows what he's about. Very experienced. But you are out there with a trainer scout. How do you get that one point? You. <laughs> from the first what, game, what, what, you, listen, what, what was from that? the first game, mm -hmm. he was defending. Mm -hmm. Even the South Korea game, he was defending when we won that game. Mm -hmm. Now we need a point. You are training attack. We just need one more point, a point to qualify. How, how I do say you're training attack is ah. line up at the beginning. Ah, but look like but you, you saw the he game. dropped Gideon Manson. Oh, he dropped on. Tariq Lamptey. What I'm saying? These are the wing back attackers. Oh, he dropped oh, them. Oh, he brought traditional lateral defenders. Oh, please. I so mean, what's the point no, you're no, making? No, 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 mommy. Well, how did we start the game? Oh, no, no, you, you, no you, you and I were here and we agreed that. We were attacking. Five, we were going in for. One we were going in for, for the win. That is, that's yeah, a, but, but that's what we've been saying. We've been saying that he should go in for the win. No, we, I mean, this, this is a, a point that you have played. So he should matches. be defending from minute zero, no, zero minutes. A, this is your last game to qualify. Yeah, you so want to qualify. Score so and so goal you and should come it. tactically well disciplined. But, but that's what With a system. And what yeah. happened? We were beating 2 zero. That we were beating so that means he came with nothing. No, no, that doesn't mean that. That we're means zero, that. Okay. But let's look at the lineup he brought. The lineup he brought was a defensive lineup. But line. we were beaten. You were beaten, but it was a defensive lineup. And we were beaten. No, we were beaten. We yeah, we we but you can't criticize him for the way he set up. He's not a good coach, you know that. Yes, but the he way he set up on coach. that day, he, he was okay. The way he set up. And we qualified. We didn't qualify, but you can't accuse ah, him for so the way So what is this? Up. Football, you don't always what get is what this? you want. You know in football. What, you know, please, you what, can, what you can, are you trying to say? We're all going to Then we have nothing to discuss here. No, we do. If you are telling me. No, no, then we have nothing to Okay, let's start from the lineup. What are you saying? Okay, let's start from lineup. What was wrong with the lineup? Listen, the bottom line is that we were not able to qualify. We okay. were beaten when we needed just a point to so qualify. So do you give him credit for beating South Korea? What credit? 
the most the most important thing is to qualify from the group stage to the um, knockout st uh, phase. That is the most important thing. And you have a trainer scout out there. I mean, what, what okay. So I, I guess say? your point. Kato Kreku is to be blamed for recruiting a trainer scout. Oh Jesus! Why did he do that? Why would he do something like that? What is your your allegations again? What, why would he do? That? Why would he bring a trainer scout? Because he also wants to win as much as we want to win. That's what I will assume. So why would why would he bring somebody who cannot win? Countryman Songo, let's get into the mind of Kreto Kreko. Because he wants to win. We have we know that he the wants to win. The FA president saw someone he could easily manipulate. Manipulate for what purpose? Putting his players there. Who are his players? <laughs> who are his players? Yes, who are his players? Who we are Kreto Kreko's players? Uh, I know I mean, Baba Raman. Yes. Fine. Because so, he played in his team. So, Dreams uh, so FC. even if it is one, I'm saying that the mm -hmm. FA player president he saw i mean a chance to be able to manipulate that coach that was that yeah was, but oh, if his player it, is only one like, oh come, that is not the issue here if his player is only one or whatever i'm saying that that is what did you see and that he, manipulation and, happening did you see course, it and, but you saw it during the lineup yeah how did you see it listen he was on record that for him to be the FA president, they will not sit down for any Blasters coach to do selection himself. But we all say that. We all don't want Blasters coach to do selection. We want him to choose the right players. Oh, fantastic. Yes. But you can't interfere. You can't tell him to put players there. You can't. Well, we you can, can tell him to put good players there. We no, were all saying you should have no, called I'm saying shop, that you can't force him. You because shouldn't. you are in charge. No, you can't. You, are you should. You the president. And the coach should not allow that. Oh, please. But Go we on. all said that he should have taken Jeffrey Schlopp, for instance. Is that interference? That, uh, that is not interference. What we are saying that he is interfering. The every president is interfering with our selection. How do you know that? Oh, that is that is a fact. And that is what is happening. Yeah, but how do you? Know? And that is what has happened. Yeah, we we are hear you, but how do you know? Yeah. Ah, how do you want me to know? Yes, because if the coach when they are good up, players and you are not calling them, but when they are good players, the you coach are hasn't complained. That what I'm saying that you are dropping good players. Why? Like who? If the FA president want the the betterment of the blasters, want the good for the blasters, he would not accept that good players will be dropped. Which good players were dropped? Yeah, oh come on, painting. You just mentioned Jeffrey Shop. Yeah, I mentioned Jeffrey. There are many players. A good year player, and you think that they were not called into the 26 because Okreku doesn't want them in. What I'm saying, yes, because he feels he's in charge, he's 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 all but over how the do you know various that? national team. When the team when the team was called, somebody signed under it. Was it Okreku's signature? There must have been you Ottawa don't you don't have to see those type of signatures before accepting that. I mean, I mean the, the, the people are interfering. You have to, but oh, you cannot I mean, just say they are interfering I mean, oh, and just say. You have to so say what do you want us to say? Now? I want you to say they are interfering How? because because of this and that. And but that. because uh, 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 it has shown and the, the reason why is also your your because the outcome. Is the outcome. 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 Yes, that, that's all. That of outcome. course. Hmm. So when we beat Nigeria away in uh, Abuja and qualified for the World Cup, we did didn't beat Nigeria. It was a one-one goalless and one-one and, and zero-zero. So goalless and one-one. We qualified on our way, go oh, Fantastic. So but we, we qualified. So Nigeria we didn't, didn't beat, qualify. We didn't beat Nigeria. You talk of outcome. So we qualified for the World yes, Cup. We didn't Was beat that credit Nigeria. to Otoado and Keto Kreko? Credit to what? The both of them. Credit to Ghanaians. I mean, the, I mean, the we're Ghanaians no, played the ball. We were able to win the match. No, but we qualified for I the World Cup. No, I mean, you are talking about outcomes. For, we went to Abuja to qualify. Please, and we did. Well, after qualification, what happened? We were last in our group. We are out of the World Cup. Yeah, but I want to understand. What I'm saying to you is that Keto Kreko has. Becoming FA president, went to Afcon. We were last. We were not able to get to our 16th stage of the competition. Now to the World Cup. Okay, so put the same one yeah, 16th put, stage. Put we were not able to get okay, there. So, Kriku so went it to means that mm -hmm. it's a big failure. I get you. But we didn't learn anything. Let, let's see whether we can rearrange. Uh -huh. Kriku went to Afcon Cup, failed. Yes. One 16th stage. Yes. Then he qualified for World Cup, positive. And failed. Then went the World, World Cup, Cup and failed. So yes. Negative, positive, so negative. What, what, is, what, that, what, is that how you want to see what, it? So what? Yes. So we but, should. What but, should we do with Kato Kriku now? He has what two years to go. He, <laughs> he has two years to serve his tenure. We can't do anything about it. But he has shown what he can do. I mean, how many that, years more has he got? It's just a year. Next year. Yes. The election is next. Yes. Year. I'm sure. Yeah. It should be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because it's four-year tenure, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And he's shown what he can do. 
He qualified for World Cup, that's positive. What I'm saying is uh, positive. Have we qualified for next year's AFCON? Uh, we've been to World Cup before, please. Yeah, yes, we've been. It's not and new. We, and not and we, we, have, we, we, we have done better we, than that we before. We have done better. Mm. We've passed that or we've been to well, 2014, we, 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 we didn't pass yes. the stage. 2014, we didn't so get out of What I'm saying is we, uh, we've reached that one sixteen stage before. Oh, we've crossed it. We've gone to Qatar. Uh -huh. So then what, what has he done? He's failed us. Okay, he couldn't, take us to the the, he couldn't take us to the, the quarterfinals that we are used to. Of course. And mm. even the women's football, we, we, we didn't qualify. You understand? And that, I mean, qualify the, for what? World Cup? For women's football, the African Cup, the World Cup, we didn't qualify. Come talk of the under-17 female. The 17 female. Mm. We are banned for how many years? Two years. We are, we are fined for $100,000. For over age? For over age, forged oh. document. Are you serious? Forged document. Oh, forged document. Yes. Ah, oh, oh, why out we had this for two players. Ah, we forged for their age. Ah, that is what the, 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 that came out. No, I was, I was, I was, I was mounting a defense to get a quick, but this one is a big one. Oh yes, and our under seventeen female, two players, the Moroccans filed a protest against us mm -hmm. that they are. Over age or whatever, they, they are documented. And it was investigated. And the, yes, and uh, we are banned for two years, paying a fund out of it. Mm. So four years out of his tenure. His tenure. What has he done? What 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 has he done? You understand what so, I'm saying? So what happened to Starless? Did they qualify for the World Cup? Did they qualify? I'm, I'm saying nobody has qualified. If, if we are left if only just the local blasters. They qualify for Chan. Chan. And that is where we have to And we have qualified careful. for AFCON next year. Yes. That okay. is where, where we are. Where are we playing AFCON very, next year? We have to be very, very careful. That is where we have to be very, very careful. Where is the AFCON next year? Um, I got to. But is it January or is it June? It, it should be June. It, it should be January. That's, that's what soon. That's next month. Yes. That's what they have been saying. Oh, I see. I mean, it should be January. But mm. uh, you know, these calf people, they can come out with anything at any time. But. I'm so because the World Cup has just ended, they might push it because the World Cup just ended in December. It's going to end in December. Then you but, play but, in but, January. But, but, that, but that one is a local. Mm -hmm. um, it's Africa alone. Africa, yeah. yeah and like the local, hosts are already maybe, determined. Yeah. Okay, so on this basis, you think Okriku has failed? Of course. Mm. So they need to change him. Who should be the next coach of the Black Stars? It should be a very experienced coach. Like Chris Hughes. Somebody who is like, yes. But he, he has been with the team. Um, for some time now, and even at the World Cup, mm -hmm. and uh, I understand that they have been sharing ideas together. Mm -hmm. So I don't see anything new. Well, maybe yes. he's not a decision maker. Oh, please, oh, don't please. I beg you. Maybe he's not a decision no, maker. When, no, well, you see now you people are saying he's not a decision maker. You should have come out to tell us that he's not. Oh, he cannot say that. Uh -huh. But we know that he's technical director. He's not the decision maker. He, he doesn't have to tell when us. When we were saying it, why is it that when I was firing that you people were saying, no, 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 no. Chris, Boatin, Didi Dramani, they have been helping Utuado. It will be fantastic. That's what they were saying. Now he's not the decision maker. Mm. He is part of this World Cup fiasco. So it will be difficult con considering Chris now. I'm telling you. So who do you have in mind? Oh, somebody like Chris, as you said, very experienced, learned. He knows what he is about. You understand? Discipline. Because if we allow Keto Kweko to appoint a new coach for the Blasters, it will be disaster. We shouldn't allow that. It's the taxpayers' money that we use in paying Blasters coach. So you can't allow Keto Kweko to do that. Alone, no, it shouldn't be so. We need an experience. I don't need to mention names when I give you, I, I come out with, with uh, an experienced coach. You should understand somebody learned, somebody who can be very disciplined and know what he's about. If the person is charging a lot of money, like Javier mm. now was charging, should we still go ahead and pay? But by your politicians, the money is that they have been spending in, spending in this country and traveling with. The uh, presidential jet or whatever, private jet and so. I mean, the Ghana, we have money. What are you telling me? How much mm -hmm. are we not spending on our MPs and the ministers and whatever, the president? And, I mean, please. But the money we spent just ended with, um, 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 we spent at, um, in Qatar. Uh, even up to now, the budget is not out. You understand? We don't know how much that we spent in Qatar. 
and we are expecting the sports minister to make sure that we know how much that we spend in Qatar, the budget. So we, we have money. We've been spending a lot big. So if we want results, we want good results, because the, tra the, the president traveled to watch blasters. Mm -hmm. Yes, the president traveled. Even so you think that even money African should be... Afghan, the president traveled to watch blasters, opening matches. So that means you have interest. You have interest, you, you have to do it well. You got it. So you have to pay good for a good coach, a good manager, to manage the blasters, to get us the good boys, get them playing good football, apart from winning, apart from bringing back that mentality of winning and winning trophies. Because 40 years now, we can't win African Cup, of course. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 is it not a worry? It's, it's a big worry. 40 years None now. None of our players playing were born at the time we last won. 40 years now, we can't win African Cup. You understand? So you, when you come in on board with a, a coach, it shouldn't be a trainer scout. You, 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 you take a part-time trainer scout coach with his two assistants part-time to World Cup. They have nothing to lose. As every president, you lead, you lead these charges. And that means you have a big, big, big personal interest. You want to manipulate the coach. You want to be able to, mm -hmm. you know, instruct the coach. Whatever that you want out from the team, that, that is why you want to put that coach there. He forces his way to put Otuadu there because he wants to manipulate him. That is what Kent is doing. The FA president. And it's a fact. Okay. Should Dede Ayu leave the team at this stage? Leave the team for what? As a retired player? Leave, leave the team for what? As a retired he player? He leaves the team in a professional way. That how, is all. How should he live in a professional way? Very professional. What is professional? Tell me. Well, you should also tell me. What is professional? Well, he should we say he has resigned. Should he say he's resigned and leave? Uh, you are forcing him to resign. I'm asking you. Uh, you, you, are, you are the football expert. He should be able to tell us if his body is okay. If you feel that his body he's is playing okay. in Qatar regularly. That is why I'm saying that. You now you are asking me. I'm not giving you the answer. You are telling me he's playing in Qatar. Uh, okay, so, so you know he's us. playing. You and know you are telling tell me he should retire. Yeah, you but, know but, somebody but is playing who, actively. But those who play, they retire. They what play for club I and retire from I understand you. What? I'm saying that it is, it is, it is up to the day. But you, you are you an expert. Looking at the Black Stars and looking at the team we have, do you think that issue... You will still need experience, one or two experience out there to be able to, you know, <coughs> help the young ones to grow. You still need the experience Should they out there. Should this be a team captain? Listen, there is not a problem for the team. The day is a workaholic player for the team. Did you ever believe that they will miss that penalty? Has he ever missed Blaster's penalty before? No, from the way he stood, it that was is what I'm saying. Oh, please, please. Did you ever believe that the day you will miss that penalty? No, from the way he stood, from was what you have been seeing from the day are you. His, no, I mean, the penalty taker was him. And I'm, it's, no, no, has no, he ever missed penalty for Blaster? I can't remember how many it's penalties. Hard. Penalties. Yes, I can't even remember. Mm. You understand? But I'm saying that the day sitting on bench. Or did they starting for the blasters? Or did they captain the blasters? It depends on you having fantastic technical team. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A good technical team with a good leader. Somebody who is very disciplined, who is learned, good coach experience, who only takes advice then after everything is from, uh, from him, the coach. I hope you understand me. He's yes. in charge. So you're saying that all those decisions so those will things, have to be made by a good and competent a, 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 a coach. A competent coach. If you think the day should be playing 20 minutes or should be playing one hour, it's, it should be the coach. It should be from a very competent board coach. When you were a trainer scout, how would the day accept that you want to bench me? When you were a trainer scout, he knows very well that you have been forced to, you know, uh, 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 to be put there or you, 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 somebody interest that is why you are there but looking at Ghana 21st century blasters can't be coached by a trainer scout no so did they are you how can you a trainer scout what is w w what is your tactics are you suggesting what? that the day you doesn't respect uh, the coach? that is not the issue <laughs> it can be anything. You are also telling me or asking me that should they day retire, should they day somebody who is actively playing football just because he has missed penalty. No, I, I'm not talking about the penalty. I'm talking about his, I mean, his contribution you are, you to the team. Be, be, 
Uh, but he's he scored in the opening game. Yeah, but he doesn't play for that. Was, that, that he's, he's not able to play the full I'm saying days. that he scored in the opening game. Yes, he did. So he has been contributing. You need an experienced coach to be able to do good selection for the Blasters, put up good players out there. No, you were making the point that the day himself, so to be able to the day himself, they were thinking the that why is a trainer scout benching me? Are you I, suggesting I, that they doesn't respect the take, coach? Take, take what I'm saying. He respects everybody. They did respect everybody. That but you are all. saying that but you, he may be uh, looking at the situation and say that by uh, you, uh, as trainer scout, how are you able to come and when tell me that are, are When players are forcing for Ghana, they are doing their best. They are, they are putting their best out there. They want to do something and you don't have somebody who can read his oppos opposition team or, or his opponent coach to be able to you know, change things to help players. I mean, sometimes you can get tired. You can get off. So you think that whether the DIU stays or not depends on the competent technical team. Fantastic. Have you heard about this Abiba matter in the in the camp? Please, let's 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 move on. Why don't you want to talk about let that? Why don't you want to talk about that? A professional me, let us move on. You don't want to hear about oh, the Abiba the matter. The Lang Langa Bell said what Abiba ever, comes to the please, camp. Please, whatever happened out there in Qatar is what I'm telling you. Our problem. Mm -hmm. Coming home, not performing well, we don't have a coach. We sent a trainer scout out there. You understand? And it's a shame to the nation for allowing that care to Kregu to have his way, to be able to, you know, force his way to put this coach there as blasters coach. No, 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 no. So if we had a so better coach, we would have done better? Of course. So please, that matter, forget so it. So Abiba, can't, forget it. Oh, please. You people, you are making... No, they say when she goes to the camp, to, and she's an innocent girl who just goes to make the hair of the players, Charlie. like your fine hair, he can, she can make it for you. Charlie. And she goes to make the hair of the Charlie. players as a job she it's does. It's your coach and, and Keto Kleku. Kleku. Simple. Do you know Langa Bell? It's your coach and Keto Kleku. I don't want to know anybody now. You don't want to know Langa Bell? I don't want to know anybody now. I'm saying that the problem that we face... In Qatar, it's your coach and the FA president. It's simple. You didn't put, or you didn't go with a good coach or with an experienced coach. Somebody who... But the FA, don't they have an executive committee? They do. can they prevail upon the president? They are all seeking their, uh, special, their interest. But if the president is seeking they, his interest with the coach, can they also find their interest in there? Of course. Is it not crowded already? The president will satisfy them so that they will not be able to check the president. How does he satisfy them? Of course. Oh, you can put in your players also the 1-1 one, one slot. Or maybe the other national teams. Oh, you can also push in your players there. They are. Oh, they are what happens. Of course, they own players. Mm. They are managing teams. Yeah. You understand? So, you put, so put I, I put my player in Black Stars. You put your player in Star, that, Star so, less, You so, have your player. So you can't check me. Or you can't, you know, fire me. That's what is going on out there. Uh, so, so but because, because of that, what is happening? So because of that, all the executive members mm. think that Baba Rahman is a better footballer than Gideon Mensah. When one million supporters <laughs> who watch the game say that Gideon Mensah is better than Baba Rahman, will the FA executive committee in the boardroom, just them, think that because of that, Baba Rahman is better than Mensah? Is that what you're saying? They call themselves so-called football people. Yes. They, 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 they feel the association belongs to them. So they are football. Well, people. they get elected. So, so I understand they get, you. They get elected. People so, vote for them. That so that if 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 it's a worry to them, they would have at least said something about it. They would have spoken about it at least. Oh, please, what is going on? We can't, you know. I mean, take it even about the coach. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have accepted Otuado to be the coach. To ask how to take us to the World Cup. It tells you that whatever the FA president is doing out there, they are in support of it because they are benefiting from it. They are also benefiting. That is why. Mm -hmm. A lot of money that they spent in Qatar, it has to be investigated. We have to really get a, a, a accountability out of it. That's mm -hmm. why I've been asking and calling on uh, the Auditor General, the Yoko. Hey, what do you the, want Auditor General to do? Oh, do? We want to know how much we spend in, uh, at the World Cup. Mm. Minister should tell us the budget, how much we spend at the World Cup. Yeah. Well, I think he should tell Parliament. He should. Uh, he really it, should. It, it, yeah, we should be able to, he should be able to, I mean, uh, account for mm. whatever that he spent. Because we played three games. Well, of course. And we came back. Yes. So was the budget for three games? Was it for quarterfinal? Was mm. it for, if there's some left, is the money gone back to 
the Accountant General or the Bank of Ghana, or is it with the FA for investment into AFCON or, you know, all of that? I see. So your conclusion is that we were let down by our coach. That's your conclusion? Yes, then Ked Ukreku, FA president. You mm. can't only put the blame on the coach because he was appointed by somebody. And so we were let down by Ket and the FA president. No. Okay. Hey. We were let down by Ket and the head coach. And yes. But the ministry appointed the coach, didn't they? They pay the coach, don't they? Oh, please. <laughs> but you are here talking about Chris. We yes. heard that the ministry wanted Chris. The ministry have already Clinton. even published that no. Chris was, is going to be the next coach. Uh, uh, FA has said that they are still uh, looking. Uh, because he was looking for his interest. Where is the coach now? Which coach? They blast that coach. But oh, he's gone. He's resigned. Uh, why? Because he says he failed at the World Cup or something. And he says his family wants to be in Germany, something funny like that. He said. Did you hear that, by the way? I, I heard it, you know, of the cuff. Did he say that? Of course. That his family wants to be in Germany. Of course. But he really shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I don't know why he said that. He shouldn't have said that. He should have just thanked Ghanaians for... Listen, listen, let me tell you something here. You see, from the one, eh, mm -hmm. the coach never committed himself. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I'm telling you. From all the things he said. Oh, to the course of Gala and had nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. You got it. You see, his own old transit uh, supported my point. Too. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it to you. Yes, that he didn't, never really was committed. Of course, he said he and his family, as you are saying, they felt more German than, you know. Yeah, that, I don't know why he said that. Uh, yes, and so why should the FA appoint such a person? When he and his family... The patriotic streak is not there. You understand? Why should the FA appoint such a person? So Kurt saw some chance there so that he can be able to manipulate this one. That is why he pushed for that coach. That is all. When somebody sees himself in Germany, not in Ghana, immediately after Uruguay March, I resigned. Yes, he was going all right. But how can you appoint a part-time coach? Knowing very well that after the World Cup, he has nothing to lose. He's going. Hey, such an FA president you are. We are still keeping him here in Ghana. You need to, you need to get him out. But we only have to wait for the next election. You need to get this guy to Kroku out. He has failed Ghanaians. He has disgraced you. Yes, he has, he has disgraced Eku Fuadu. Of course, the president Why? of the Republic of Ghana. Yeah. He traveled to Cameroon for the opening game. He was last at Afcon, yeah, Afcon, and then he was he at the traveled game again for the opening game in Portugal. He was disgraced. and he saw the referee cheating us. He, he, he was disgraced by Otuado and Keto. The referee was cheating us. You see, you are helping them to continue to misbehave. No, no, I don't want them to continue to misbehave. You are helping them, but so you are not. You are not he, identifying he, the he, fact he, that the referee was a problem as well. It, there was no problem. You got it. When mm. you won against South Korea, the referee was not a problem. No, he was good for us. The, the, there was a handball that he used his discretion to give to us. Thank he you. was good. He was very Fine. good. So no problem. Mm. I'm still coming to the fact that Keto Kreku has disgraced the MPP government, the president, Kufuadu. Why? Mm. Why do you people sit there for Keto Kreku to do that to him? I don't, I'm not is sure whether the MPP president man? feels that I'm he has been disgraced. MPP man? I don't know. But so what would, would you do that to Akufuado? I, I don't know whether you would you do that feels, to Akufuado. I don't know whether Akufuado feels that Keto Kriku has no. disgraced him. I don't ah, know whether he feels that. Ah, but you, eight years of his tenure, mm -hmm. or let me say his term mm -hmm. as Ghana president. Yes, I pray that God gives him that eight years. He finish it. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This president has been able to. He he's he's been to World Cup. Qualified for one World he's Cup. He's qualified. He for, missed the other World Cup, Russia. Yes, but he's qualified for Qatar World Cup. Mm -hmm. He has qualified for Afcon. First, it was Afcon. Mm -hmm. You go out there with all the hopes. Your sports minister, before we went to Afcon, what did he say? He said we are going to win the cup. Mm -hmm. So the president was in high spirit. He had to travel to. Uh, Cameroon for the mm -hmm. opening match. Mm -hmm. We're beaten. We're disgraced. Then also the president traveled for the World Cup. After assuring the president that Ghana will qualify and win the World Cup. That was the assurance he gave to the president. That mm -hmm. Ghana will qualify from the group stage and win the World Cup. So the president 
travel to Qatar with a lot of confidence. You saw a Kufuadu in pictures, video in Qatar. Didn't you see? Mm -hmm. You saw your man. Fantastic. So happy. Then, 3-2. Mm -hmm. Then came one one match. Three, then two. it was like, oh, we are there. hell break loose. We, we are, are there. there. Mohamed Kudus. You understand? Mm -hmm. we, 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 instead of staying focused and keeping the team on his toes, very professional to let the coach know that we are not yeah, but they said yet. Abiba went there. Please. I, 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 I ignore that nonsense. Mm -hmm. Then, they, they, they left off guard. Then we lost against Uruguay. And crashed out painfully. Crashed out. Disgracing the Kufuadu's government. Because of the lot of assurance. A lot of assurances they gave to the uh, president. Even the president himself helping to get, I mean, sponsorship, money. Yeah, yeah, he did. To he did. help. Personally, he contacted So MCN, that yeah. Ghana supporters, Ghanaians can be in Qatar MCN to support MCN pledged that. 2 million, yeah. Dollars. So with this, you don't feel sorry and sad for the president. I feel sorry for the president. I do. For all what the president has done for you. Today, hmm. you are helping Kate to disgrace this president. <laughs> My man. I like the way you put it. Helping Kate to disgrace the president. Of course, because... Well, he disgraced him when we went to Afcon. He, he has disgraced him again in Qatar. Get your text messages ready, ladies, and then I'm coming to you right away. Uh, Countryman Soko is always very, very interesting to talk to. He's three minutes at the top of the hour at 11, and uh, our eyeballs are cracking up. I'm sure so many people are watching. Let me start with you. Eunice, uh, what message do you have? I think we should sponsor Kwabna Yeboa to be the next FA president. Nana Kweku from Kaswa. Lily Wells. Paul, you need to bring Dan Kweku Yeboa as well. From Nene Ableku Seshi, he says that I just like and love this song man too much. Kwe. And coming from Barry George, Ghanaians and hypocrisy. Our forefathers killed the mindset of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and his name still reign. And we are doing the same to the positive set from Countryman Songo. Hashtag, our football is collapsing. We need to structure all sectors. Fire them, Songo. Coming from Deborah Fireman, more fire. From Festus Dance Cell, Agana Pa. Cat shouldn't be allowed to even go close to one Chandi football. He has nothing to offer our country. And from Mark Prince Israel. Paul, you heard the statement Otoadu gave after he resigned that the next blaster code should take bold decisions and be fearless. Why do you think he made that statement? Paul, the GFA interfered in the work too much. Please, and lastly from Raymond Mensa, more fire. Okay, so this message is from Nana Yao. Anyone who is bland, sincere, and straightforward is seen controversial. Songo, good job done. Keep on fighting for the best. This message is also from Aaron, and he says, Aaron says, we should accept the fact that we have lost the game and that we should come back to our drawing board and correct our mistakes just to bring the love back. Football is a game of passion, which demands talented and skillful energetic and confident team players maybe we should hand over the ghana black star team to countryman songo to be managing say do samad also coming from behi now yimbo he says until we learn to call the right players and stop this political invite believe me we will continue to have this result in my heart of heart i know ghana is a football nation but we must learn to do what is right Wow, Songo, you are too much. Coming from Bento Alexander. Patrick Donko is correcting us. He says the AFCON is January 2024 and not January 2023. Nakoko says all local coaches did not make it out of the group stages. And Senadi Dan says, but Otuado didn't play any penalty, or did he? Lastly, from Lama GH, he says, more fire. Over to you. Says, Good evening, uh, Paul. It says, uh, Keto Kiku is the most disappointing GFA boss for the past 20 years. It says, in the beginning of this year, it was disaster for the Black Stars. We are again ending the year in a disgraceful manner. Country Songo is right. Now, look back in 2014 World Cup. Black Stars was the only team uh, to, to, uh, to, team to standing up to Germany 
mighty Germany, and the Germans defeated Brazil 7-1. So we had great potential. Uh, it says immediately Ketofuku took over the GFA. He handed over the TV rights to Star Times. And the Star Times will not develop our league. Only GTV would. Uh, he says to me, Okriku is poor and he must go. Well, he, he, if he won an election, so he's going to uh, fight an election before he goes. Yes, Mikael. Uh, so, watching from Takarade, Surakatu says, Good evening, Paul. Assuming that the Black Stars progress and meet almighty Brazil in the round of 16, and the Brazil scored the then Black Stars 7-0, to me it would have been more forging than thanking Didi Ayu for breaking the hearts of millions of Ghanaians. Uh, this is from... Philip Asoba watching us from Bolgatanga, he says, or to others should explain to us if they actually made some changes with regards to who takes our penalties prior to this Qatar 2022, because we knew that Jordan was our penalty taker. But why was Dede allowed to take it then? We are just our own problem in this country. This is a man, Otto, who told us from day one that he couldn't come and stay in Ghana because his wife and children were comfortable in Germany and feeling German, and he was very much committed to his Dortmund job. Now we still gave the job to this man who never showed seriousness and commitment. If not a GFA president who wanted to satisfy his own parochial interest, is the coaching job of the Black Stars now a part-time job? This GFA president, Kra, really, the content in... Or to Ado's resignation letter is a real insult to our country. How do you change a winning team? Who does that? Now, uh, this says, this is from Mark watching us from the USA. He says, Paul, the 2022 World Cup is full of surprises. Songo should be patient a bit. We understand his passion, but the threat of leaving the show because of opposing views is much to be desired. He did it at Adom and Kokuroko on peace this morning. He threatened you some minutes ago. All of us cannot be on his page. He should also accept. Uh, he says a uh, countryman threatened you a few minutes ago. We don't know. He says countryman told threatened a few minutes ago. Yes, who? we don't know if that's true. On his page. Let's, well, countryman, who? who do you threaten? Who? No, you. You. Countryman told threaten me. Yes, that's oh. what the message says. What did he say? So, it, oh, let me read the message again. It <laughs> says, we understand his passion, but the threat of leaving the show because of opposing views is much to be desired. Oh, he didn't say he would leave the show. Oh, oh, oh anyway, no problem. He was concerned that we started late, which we apologize, <laughs> but he didn't say that he would leave the show. <laughs> Country Masongo, did you say that you Well, I said, show? maybe, we, if the, you said, I, you asked me something. Of, uh, well, I was talking, then you said something, and I said, then maybe... If you don't want us to, so we should move. So oh, sure yeah, when move. I was talking about uh, the, the day you <laughs> yes, and yes, the, yes, yes, yes. and the penalty and all that. Yeah. Yeah. And we move on. Professional, no problem. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, that. <laughs> Eunice, you seem very fascinated. Why are you looking at Countryman Songo like that? You're fascinated. He's a baby girl, please. <laughs> He's a baby girl. Don't, she don't, seems very fascinated. Don't worry her at all. Man, so what are your last words? What's going to happen to the World Cup? Who's going to win it? <sighs> Morocco are in the quarterfinal. And if they beat Portugal, they're in the semifinal. You see... Our every president, Kit, he has nothing to offer than satisfying his personal interest. I'm asking who's going to win the World Cup. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. Ghana football will suffer if we have this guy as president beyond next year. Beyond yes. next year? Yeah, just mark it. Who should be president next year? Some, some so of the how did this, So how did he even qualify to be FA president? He ran for elections and he was elected. Ah, Jesus Christ. Why? <sighs> but who should be FA president next time? The election is next year, 23. Wow. So who should be? Who should be the next FA president? Well, I will, I, I'm sure I'll come back here. Yeah, you will. You so will tell me. You, when I come back. George Free, is that when, you? When I come back. Yeah. What's your final word? There are people. That's what, that's what, that's I, your final what word? I'm saying to Ghanaians, and we shouldn't allow this FA solely to appoint new blast stars coach we should have a way in which who participates parliament the people of ghana mm -hmm. the sports ministry mm -hmm. yes even parliament but what i'm saying is okay let's put it this way down mm -hmm. you understand that should we should everybody should suggest we should come out with ideas when there are coaches applying or we line up coaches for the job we should allow everybody to come out of a suggestion. At least out of 10%, we'll get majority. Majority carries the vote. Okay, so we should have a criteria that the so, Black Stars coach must have coached for 20 years, for 10 years. He must show proficiency in solid defending. He must come with a great scout. 
He must have an assistant coach who is a good video analyst. We must have a criteria. Oh, the, uh, every time they come with criteria. But we must have one standard. But, uh, that you can't be a black stars know, coach without we, 20 years experience uh, as coach. We know what we want. Having participated in international we, tournaments we, before. We know what yeah, we, we, should, we, we know should what we yeah, want. Yeah. But we just don't want to go for it. So we go for having Renan. He's also a fantastic coach. But and he was an assistant coach to us before. We, under, under which regime? Was it Claude Lera? Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, under yes. Claude Lera, he was assistant. And he, 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 he was learning. Yeah, he's done well. He's, you understand? I mean, sadly, everybody didn't qualify, though. You know that. They didn't I know. understand you. But, but they'd be defeated. Yeah, what I'm saying is, mm -hmm. you can see something. Argentina, it was, yeah. You, you can see something from Javi Wiener that yeah. in the past he has learned. Well, you can see his and, profile. You can tell. And he can do something. Those are coaches. He won AFCON more than once with yeah. two different countries. Good. So you go in for good coaches, professional. Were good coaches, and but we say we want local coach. We'll be saying that Harvey and I is not Ghanaian. I mean, when you even go in for a local coach, they are good, competent local coaches there. But where is the support? This man didn't give CK Akono support, but he gave the trainer scout support. He gave him like 10 backroom staff at the he World Cup. Still paid CK you understand? He, he gave him like 10 backroom staff, but look at CK Akono interfere in a selection to the extent that a former captain you you, you tag him as matra makwe he, he is matra makwe we are now we have we now come in with somebody who is not matra makwe and that was milo that akit milo we have to sack him then instead of we taking our time and making sure that we invest and invest well in the blasters coach Straight up, this man was in Germany. He spent a whole lot of months in Germany just because of Otuado. He knows somebody. He knows that he can manipulate him. That is the reason why. So moving forward, we don't have to allow him alone. And his so-called football people to appoint a Blasters coach. No, we are the taxpayer. We pay the Blasters coach. Okay. Thank you, Country Mansongo, thank you very much. We'll leave it there. And, and please, uh, the, the sports minister, uh -huh. you, 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 you can't be in bed with the FA president. Mm -hmm. You understand? The band that we are serving us uh, for the, um, the under 17, mm -hmm. what is the minister saying? Blasters use the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. We need to do renovation. What is the minister saying? Electricity, if cut power. To Cape Coast Stadium. Cape Coast Sports Stadium. What is the minister doing? Look at the various sports stadium. What is the minister doing? Even the Siama, he left something mm -hmm. as the former sports minister. Mm -hmm. The sports complex that he built. Kanishi is real. The man has, aband uh, he has abandoned those sports complex, those sports, sports complex at, at the various regions. But he has to invest in it he has to complete them he has to do something out of it so that the people in the regions minister. can get facilities so this sports minister too, he has no legacy that's my problem because he he has also failed uh, uh, the government and Ghanaians um at Af afcon he's also disgraced in Afcon. of course the same here you can say it after this because he's, about, a, but if he's he, an appointee of the government uh, but the, but I think the, the sports minister two, is a good guy the fp2 is uh, he was very determined to get black stars right they are and that's why he wanted i think the sports minister is a good guy a good guy a good guy yeah, he's a good, a good guy, guy of what he's a good guy he a wanted, good he, guy of what he was trying to get the black stars right he wanted chris hilton oh, he chris. spoke about chris he wanted the sports minister minister of state you are the you pay he's the boss you are the boss you pay blasters coach and you want chris hilton and the fa want uh to add the china scout and you succumb to them no ah! fifa will say that it's the gfa oh, you are lying. fifa will hey, say the what, gfa that you the coach what, the fa the gfa selects the coach no, that is not the issue fifa will say that you should, the, the you sports should. minister doesn't select no, the coach no, there is the taxpayers money you need to, you know, find your way out. You have to show the that. The sports minister can say, oh, though, you please, are right. You can please. say that if you take auto order, I won't pay him. I won't pay. You can pay him yourself. I won't pay. You can pay him yourself. That will bring a crisis. That will bring the crisis. And we are heading Fantastic. for World Cup. Two months to World Cup. Yes. But what happens? You can't use the blasters without Ghanaians. With the Ghanaians, you can't use the blasters. So you can't tell me that Minister of State, a who has given a job to do as sports minister. You understand? The various national teams... They are under your care. You are only giving them to the FA to be caretakers. 
you understand the so as minister you have to be checking the of, the country, of course so as minister you have to be checking on them you have to be putting them on your toes you don't have to be in bed with her to play when he's doing bad things to ghana football you can't check him you can't ask questions you can't ask questions because we are, you are in bed with Ketu Kweku as sports minister. We are banned from under 70 women football. How? There's no sanctions on the FA. How? You can't who, even who ask questions. the documents? Who did that? Thank you. As yeah. sports minister, CID you should be know. on them. CID needs to know. Our various sports stadium, they are all getting off. Mm -hmm. What is the sports minister doing? Now we go to, uh, to Afghan. We are disgraced. We go to World Cup. We are disgraced. Minister said we are going to win the World Cup. He said that we are going to win the Afcon. Now, where are those two trophies? So please don't say he's he's a he's a good he's guy. He's a nice guy. He's a no, nice oh, he's a nice guy. He's a Nobody nice guy. is saying that he's a bad he's man. He's a nice guy. But that he's a nice is he face or what? Face, yeah. Mm. All right, that's Countryman Songo. Oh, yeah. Good evening, Ghana. Uh, disappointment that the Black Stars uh, left the World Cup the way that they left. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. We'll be back on Thursday with another edition of the show. Uh, sorry, last week we didn't give you enough information that we're going to be out. Uh, we, we, Ibrahim Zebela was in Qatar, but I was not in Qatar. And the rest of the team were not in Qatar. We we're here. Uh, but we took a break, a World Cup break. We are back now. Uh, we'll be on until we take our Christmas break. So welcome back. Good evening, Ghana is on for the rest of December. Thanks for watching at 12 minutes past 11 o'clock. Good night.